Welcome to Good Spirit Graphics. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at MochaBlend's Perspective Solver. In Mocha, we'll track a single plane. In Cinema 4D, we'll turn that track into a camera solve. Okay, let's get started. This tutorial contains the following sections. Tracking the plane in Mocha, setting the 3D solver geometry, and creating the camera solve. In the last tutorial, we did a 3D solve from a perspective track in Mocha. We were lucky enough in that shot to have a frame where the tracked plane was directly facing at the camera. In this shot, we don't have a frame where the tracked plane is ever facing directly at the camera, so we're going to have to use a different technique in MochaBlend this time to get a good 3D solve. In this shot, I used this image as a tracking marker. We're going to use that to create a camera solve from this single tracked plane using MochaBlend. We're going to draw our spline around this image on the last frame of the image sequence, because on that frame it's closest to the camera, and it'll be easier to position our blue surface area on that frame. So let's go ahead and draw a spline around the area we want to track. It doesn't have to be right on it because we have a blue screen behind it, and Mocha won't get confused by that actually if we overlap it like this. Now you'll see our blue surface area popped up, which is pretty much useless to us in this position because our plane is not facing right at the camera. So let's go ahead and take our blue surface area, and let's just put it right on the corners of our image. Okay, that's good enough. Now we're going to track again with everything here because we're doing a 3D solve, so make sure shear and perspective are turned on. And let's go ahead and track backwards. Now let's check our track. We'll go to the last frame and click on Stabilize here. And then we'll just go through the shot and see if that blue surface area is sticking right on the corners of our image. And it looks like Mocha has done an excellent job. I might use this image as a tracking marker from here on. It looks like Mocha really likes it. Okay, let's go ahead and export now. We're going to click on Export Tracking Data and select Mocha Blend Tracking Data. Here in Cinema 4D, we're going to paste our data in. Now we can either pick a slot with something in it and overwrite that slot, or we can pick an empty slot here. The blue highlighted area is the active slot. So let's go ahead and paste our data in slot 5 and set up our scene. We're going to import our format from our Mocha data. We're going to create a rig. We're going to set our timeline in Cinema 4D to match our data. Then we're going to pick up our footage. The first image in the sequence here will drop into the camera view area right here. And you'll see it pops up on our frame. Now let's go down to the Mocha Blend Solve tab here. Make sure we're on 3D mode for our solver. And go down to Geometry. You'll see under Auto here it says None. Now previously on the last tutorial we got a frame number here because we were able to set the geometry in Mocha. We don't have a frame in this image sequence where the plane is ever facing directly at the camera. So we're going to have to set the geometry manually. So on user mode here, let's go ahead and click on geometry editor. And you'll see we get our image sequence along with our blue surface area from Mocha. You'll be able to see that a little better if you add an overlay to your background. It seems like uh, light green works a little bit better here. Contrasts a lot with the blue. There you go. Here's the blue surface area here. That is sticking nicely, just like it did in Mocha. Now what we want to do next is give Mocha Blend the geometry it needs to create a solve. So let's go ahead and turn off that overlay for a second, and you'll see it says geometry is not set. If you don't see that, then make sure your little info box here is selected. That displays information about your geometry. Now next up we want to set our geometry to what the shape of this tracked plane is if it were facing directly at the camera. Now if we don't know anything, we can go ahead and click the auto button and MochaBlend will attempt to calculate what the shape of that tracked plane is. Now because MochaBlend doesn't know anything about your lens settings or the lens distortion, 
it's going to have a hard time doing this. So this auto button should really only be used as a last resort when you don't know anything about the tracked area. In this shot, I happen to know quite a lot because I used it as a tracking marker. I happen to know that it is 7 units this way by 5 units this way. So we can go ahead and enter those values right here. 7 by 5. The units don't matter. They can be angstroms or light years. All it cares about is the ratio between these two. If we click on Set, there are the proper dimensions of our tracking marker if it were facing directly at the camera. Now, if I don't have these measured dimensions, another way we can do it is simply to use the actual tracking image itself. We can open a file, go to where we have the image stored, open it up, and MocoBlend will load it up in here, and it will get the geometry that way. We can go ahead and turn off the image portion of it, because MocoBlend doesn't care what the image is. All it cares is the ratio between the height and the width here. So if we turn that off, you'll see we have the geometry. Now normally we want to center it on our tracked area here, and we do that by using this little auto button here. This aligns the geometry with the Mocha surface. Let's click on that, and you'll see that's all we need to do. Now we can close out our window and solve. Now we always want to check our solve, so let's open up the graph editor and take a look at it. Uh, this looks like it is as good as it's going to get. Now let's create a camera solve. Now if we zoom out, we'll see a path, and it looks like a good path too. You'll see that it has no gaps in it, and we'll go ahead and look through the camera like this, and scrub the timeline. Now that white grid you see is the blue surface area in Mocha. It is a static object, and it's just sitting on the world origin there. You can actually change that grid to whatever you want by going to the General tab, and setting it to either logo, which is the MochaBlend logo, or 4x4, or any of the other options here. Now you can see the way the image is sticking right on our grid that we have a good camera solve here. So let's go ahead and do something with it just so we can take a look at it better. Let's move out of camera view, and you'll see we have our background pushed back, so it's not going to intersect with anything here. We can also make our background so it is not transparent again. That way it looks a little better through the camera view. And then on our grid here, you'll see it is not moving. The camera is basically moving around it in a traditional camera solve sense. So let's go ahead and put a cube right on our grid. We'll scale it down. And move it up so it's sitting right on our grid here. There we go. Now let's go ahead and look through our camera again. And again, I like to turn on constant shading lines so we can see things a little bit better. We're going to turn off our grid first just so we can see our cube on our background footage a little better. So let's go down to our camera solve motion here. And let's turn off, actually it's our reference plane right here that we're looking at, right? So let's turn that off and then play through the shot. Okay, this looks like an excellent solve. I don't see the cube slipping at all against the background footage.